so we are going to have a brief talk on how um, tinea capitis presents in children. Um, and amongst our objectives um, for this talk is uh, for us to be aware of what determines the various forms of uh, clinical presentation. Um, then we uh, briefly talk about the various uh, presentations uh, of the inflammatory type and we talk about the various uh, forms of the um, inflammatory type of tinea capitis. Um, so to start with, what determines how tinea capitis looks like in the scalp of a child is actually the degree of inflammation. Um, and so you have a spectrum from um, the very end where um, you have a scaly and inflamed dermatosis where there is uh, very little or no um, inflammation to um, the other end where you have very inflamed or uh, deep abscesses which are sometimes known as um, carrion cells and um, with the very inflamed types and you have um, higher degrees of inflammation and then you have bits of it in the middle um, where you will have alopecia with erythema or uh, pustules as we will um, look at in a bit. Now, in the non-inflammatory presentation, uh, what you have is anthrophilic dermatophytes um, often. And um, if you remember, the anthrophilic uh, dermatophytes were the ones that um, you acquired from other humans, so human-to-human -human transmission. Um, and they will often have an ectothrix pattern of infection. And what's um, distinct about this group is that they have very low virulence. Um, so they are not inducing the um, immunity of the host so much. Um, and so they do not have um, high degrees of inflammation. So with the infl non-inflammatory type, you would have um, a scaling, subarachic form. Um, and often what you have is well circumscribed patches of alopecia. Um, because of the destroyed hair follicles and sometimes you will have multiple patches um, all over the scalp or sometimes you will have one big uh, patch of alopecia on the um, child's scalp. Um, so if we look at these two pictures, um, what you see on your, um, to the left of your screen um, is multiple scaling um, patches, um, subarachic gray patches all over the head that look gray um, they are uh, at the occiput, the parietal regions, um, and they, um, these ones were particularly caused by the um, dermatophyte microsporum or deny. Now, um, on the slide to the, to the right of your screen, then what you see there is one big patch um, of alopecia at the occiput area. Um, that's very diffuse with no other satellite lesions elsewhere. And this was um, tinea capitis that was caused by um, Trichophyton sudanese. So these are the two uh, main presentations that you get with uh, the non-inflammatory type of tinea capitis. And this is what most of us are familiar with. Um, usually when we see the diffuse alopecia, tinea capitis will automatically um, jump into um, our minds. Um, this is what this is likely to be. But when you have the multiple scaling type, then sometimes you, um, you will need to differentiate it from different other things that we, we will talk about. Um, so this is another um, big one, a diffuse alopecia on the side of the scalp. Um, in a child and you can see this 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 one is not very smooth um, it's diffuse with a bit of uh, a little bit of folliculitis uh, bumps um, that you see in that area of alopecia um, so this is a bit of the mixed type um, so if you look to the right of your screen then you will see one big area of um, alopecia behind the ear and you see a couple of a uh, few other small um, maybe three or four um, subarachic um, lesions um, surrounding it now to the left of your screen then you have uh, um, um, the multiple subarachic form but this one shows you can see a little bit of degrees of inflammation and what you look out um, to tell you that you have inflammation is often pustules or erythema that's surrounding the lesions um, you would see that on the on the left side of your screen <coughs> now um, away from those two lesions that you've looked uh, that we've looked at is a presentation that's often called the black dots presentation 
Um, and here what you have is an, endoth uh, an endothric trichophyton infection and um, the hair shaft breaks as it's coming off the scalp. Um, and so it leaves black dots where the um, hair shaft was supposed to have come from. Um, and this particular one is caused by um, um, some specific strains of um, trichophyton infections. And so what you will see on the scalp is several black dots um, where the hair follicles were supposed to have come from uh, because an infected um, hair shaft has actually cut off at, um, at the level of, uh, of the scalp. Now, when we jump to the inflammatory presentation, um, I would like us to talk a little bit about what makes uh, one um, species induce an inflammatory reaction and another one not to, or what will make one host develop a uh, significant inflammatory reaction and the other one not to. Um, so the first one is of course the host's reaction to the metabolic products of the fungus. So when the fungus is multiplying and um, there are all these byproducts of um, its presence on the scalp um, of a patient, um, those metabolic uh, products that are being released induce different forms of reactions um, on different hosts. Um, so if the host has a robust reaction to those metabolic products and they will have a higher degree of inflammation. Then of course the virulence of the infecting strain or the species and as we have said the anthrophilic forms uh, of dermatophytes, the ones that uh, will have spread from, human, uh, from animal to human uh, usually have higher virulence and will induce a, um, also a very vigorous inflammatory reaction in, in the host. Then the other one would be the anatomic location of, 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 of the infection and in that comes the local environmental factors. How wet or dry is it? How intact was the skin before the um, infection or not? Um, those are some of the things that will make um, the presentation to vary from um, one patient to another one. So the process usually will have an initiation phase, the, how it progresses, and then it has the peak of um, inflammation. And at the very beginning, what you have is a dry tinea uh, with scaling and short hairs. Then after that, you have a mild form of inflammation that has erythema. And then after that, you would have pustules and pus and uh, fever sometimes with marked cervical adenopathy, depending on the various presentations that you would have. And often if this is left untreated, it will lead to um, complete healing and elimination of the fungus within about two, um, two months. Um, though this is very, very distressing for the patient as we can tell. Now, stepping a little back from um, this big major inflammatory reaction that's happening locally, sometimes you will have other um, uh, distant reactions that are called dermatophytide reactions, also called trichophytoid reactions with different spellings depending on where you're looking. And here what you have is autoeximatization. So you have um, a diffuse dermatitis um, that is usually um, distant from the focus of the infection and it could be localized or it could be generalized and it has various presentations, often pistils. It would look like some form of eczema depending on um, where you're looking. Um, and it will occur any time, either at the height of the infection, during the treatment period, or um, when the infection happens. And sometimes um, some studies have demonstrated that if you have these dermatophytoid reactions, these um, generalized dermatitis with auto uh, um, eczematization in a patient, then they are sometimes associated with carrion formation. So these are the patients who are likely to go on and, and form carrions. Um, so the, the dermatophytoid reactions will present as eczematous lesions, they have popules, they have scaly patches, they have vesicles, they have pustules. And classically, when you're talking about tinea capitis uh, specifically, then you would get an ear sign. So what you have is erythematous papules and scaling that overlies the helix, as you can see on the, um, on the photograph to the left of your screen. So you look at that um, helix. Um, of the ear and you can see the tiny little uh, papules that are uh, red and pustules over there um, and sometimes also in the retro auricular regions. Um, so other than the ear signs, um, this other photograph on your, on your right shows the small tiny erythematous papules that are really distant. That would be the arm when you have a scalp infection and you're getting these um, eczema-like looking lesions on your, on your arm. 
Um, so when we uh, jump back into the inflammatory presentations, uh, how will this look like? So you would have uh, pustula um, uh, lesions, so patchy alopecia with scattered pustules or low-grade folliculitis. Sometimes you would have favors, and in favors what you have is erythema around the hair follicle. Then you have um, scatula, which is a yellow crusted cup-shaped lesion um, with with um, hair loss, so there's a bit of matting, um, oozing of the lesion, um, and then it crusts on top and tends to look yellow uh, surrounding the lesion, and this may also involve the skin and the nails. And you can have mycetoma, which is nodular lesions um, that overlies the erythematous and scaly plaques, sometimes with sinus tracts, sometimes with purulent drainage, and sometimes with pseudo alopecia. And um, another form of inflammatory presentation that we're going to talk about in a little more detail is actually a carrion. Um, so with the carrion um, would be the severest form of the inflammatory type of tinea capitis. And here you have a painful, crusty, matted, uh, boggy scalp plaques. Um, with drainage, several sinus tracts coming out of this lesion. When you touch it, um, it feels like the scalp is, um, the skin overlying the scalp is separated from what's under. It almost feels like an abscess. And most of the times it is solitary and it's in the occipital area, um, but there are reports of it being found in uh, different unusual sites like the vulva, the beard, or the eyebrow. And of course, as we said, um, it will be because of an infection by zoophilic dermatophytes. Uh, lymphadenopathy is very common and sometimes um, it results in uh, permanent alopecia, scarring alopecia, and it can also get bacterial superior infection. When you see a carrier, the first thing you think about is an abscess. You would think this is a scalp abscess. And you have to do a bit more of investigations, taking the history, examining the patient fully um, to be able to tell is this a carrion or is this an abscess? Because treatment um, is different for the two of them. Um, so these are pictures showing the pustula uh, form of um, the inflammatory type, which was a very uh, mild form of the inflammatory type of presentations. And what you see um, there are um, the scaly, the multiple scaly um, lesions all over the scalp. Then you see pustules. And then surrounding the pustules where the arrow is, you can see bits of erythema, so redness. And I appreciate that this, this might be a little hard to uh, appreciate on dark-skinned uh, patients, but with a good examination, you'll be able to tell uh, there are three things going on here. There's a bit of erythema, there's a bit of pustules, and you have this um, scaly dermatosis that's going on. Um, now here uh, we get to see the carrion as I described. It's a very dramatic presentation of tinea capitis. And what you see here is the matting. Um, you can see all the hair is matted together. Um, and you can see the, the, the discharge uh, from the lesions is uh, what has dried out. And so you have this yellow crusting, um, something that's covering the entire scalp um, where you have trouble figuring out where does it start and where does it end. Um, you will also see areas of um, alopecia that really come out at you in some areas, like you can see that over the parietal, uh, a bit over the parietal regions um, 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 on, the, on, the, uh, on the side of the scalp that's closest to the screen. Um, and sometimes you will have to um, clean it out or um, shave the head to really be able to appreciate where the problem is. Now, when you touch it, this feels boggy, um, and you can almost tell like there, uh, there, there is a dissection of the tissue planes. That's how it feels, like you have a boggy mass um, that's moving over the scalp, and it looks like um, an abscess, um, a bacterial abscess. That's the first thing that, for most clinicians, when you see this, the first thing that comes to your mind is, is this a scalp abscess? Um, and you need to take a bit more history and do further examination to see what could this be. Now, the one to the right of our screen is, this one is a little easy to tell uh, because as you can see, the, the, the hair has been shaven and so you can easily appreciate the lesion um, at the top of the scalp. And what you have is a, uh, is a well circumscribed uh, lesion where the skin has been peeled off and uh, surrounding that area you get to see a bit of alopecia and you can also see um, alopecia in several different places um, away from the main lesion. So this is how um, a carrion cells would look like. Um, 
Now, sometimes, uh, depending on where it is, so like um, this um, carrion lesion is towards the, the frontal region of the scalp, and here what you see is um, that's um, imp uh, um, impeding lymphatic drainage from the face. Um, and what you end up uh, with is an angioedema like reaction um, in a patient who has um, carrion cells. In. Um, now, there are different criteria that have been used uh, for diagnosing um, a carrion, things that will make you think this is more likely to be, um, and depending on how many you have. Um, so I, you would kind of use this criteria to uh, lead you in a different, in one direction. And what I use it for is uh, to remind you of the things you ought to be looking for. And as many as you can find, they help you point towards the diagnosis of a carrion as opposed to alternate diagnosis that this would be. And so amongst the major uh, criteria is tenderness to palpation. So a carrion will be, uh, will hurt when you move, um, obviously. Um, then you get alopecia surrounding the lesion. So if you would go back to the um, this image that we looked at, you see the um, the inflamed, peeled off skin, and around that lesion is you get to see the ring of alopecia surrounding it. So if you have an alopecia uh, surrounding whatever lesion you're looking at, if you have numerous pustules and purulent um, drainage from the lesion, that's another thing that you would use. And if you get areas of scaling, because as we talked about, itinia capitis is going to present with scaling. And for the minor criteria is to look for dermatophytoid uh, reactions. And those would be in, um, as we talked about, in the around the helix, um, in the retroricular regions, and in other distant areas of the body. And you look for regional lymphadenopathy. Um, then if you have dermoscopy, um, you would examine and see um, what um, sort of changes are you seeing around the hair follicles and the hair around um, the lesion. Then you, if you have clear demarcation of borders, um, if you have overlying erythema and pruritus as we've looked at, and if you have several boggy plaques, so several plaques all over the head, which when you move, they feel boggy. Um, now, as we said before, um, dermatophytoid reactions um, are often associated with carrion. And in this series of 19 patients um, um, that were reported in this journal of uh, pediatric dermatology by Demir and his colleagues, about 68% of them had a dermatophytoid reaction. And the presentation of the dermatophytoid reaction varied um, depending. Um, so the majority of the patients who had a carrion actually had eczematous uh, plaques and patches in about a third of them. Um, then 15.8% had just papules with no uh, uh, pustules or patches. About 10% had a mixture of papules and pustules, and a fraction of them had angioedema. So this is to remind us that when you get a patient who has a carrion, then you need to be looking for these other signs of um, dermatophytoid reaction because this helps us in a diagnosis and it helps us realize probably this is coming from a patient who has a very uh, vibrant immune response to the antigens. Um, so in summary, we have discussed um, the non-inflammatory and the inflammatory um, presentations of uh, tinea capitis um, and, um, um, as, um, and, and, and two, we have also talked about a carrion and how it presents and the things we need to be looking um, out for when we are thinking of a carrier diagnosis. Thank you very much.